I just want to start off. Congratulations, Aisha. Thank you, thank you. I, you know, I am constantly talking about how people of color are now the new American majority in this country, and it is because of the growing Latinx community, obviously. So talk to us about how the Latinx community is the new face of the civil rights movement in America. So there's a data point that I've been repeating ad nauseum, and I'm okay with repeating it every single day if I could kind of carry it in around in a sign. And thank you, Aisha, for pointing it out because it is simply a factual reality. So half of the total population growth of the entire United States in the last census came from Latino and Latina births in the United States, mm. not immigration, mm. but births in the United States. Mm. What does it say? It says we are a very loving people if you get my my drift. <laughs> but what it also <laughs> says, it also says that we are a hopeful people, right? I think about the fact that my own parents, we were all Mexican immigrants on the south side of Chicago. You know, it was right after the 1968 uh, police brutality on the Democratic National Convention. You know, Fred Hampton had been murdered in our community. Uh, the Black Panthers were being hunted down. And my parents, Mexican immigrants, were like, we're going to buy an apartment here. And in many ways, people don't understand that Latinos and Latinas, we are, in fact, banking on this country, even though, as you know very well, this country, you know, kind of slaps us around. But we're like, we're here. We're buying houses. Latinos and Latinas are driving the housing market. People don't talk about this right mm. now. Not only are we building mm. the housing houses, and I know that you see that in Atlanta all the time, but we are buying the houses as well. We are a massive economic powerhouse. And now we're having to actually deconstruct a narrative, Aisha, that was constructed, mm. you know, not, not, not by the past administration only, but intensified. And it's really been several decades in the making where Latinos and Latinas and all immigrants who are black, eh, Latino, Latina, brown, Asian, where we are all, seen as a problem in this country, and it's not true. Hmm. You know, you bring up such a good point because we're, we're going to talk about immigration, but what you're talking about is a whole community of Americans, right, that are growing in number, birthing babies, buying houses, you know, feeding and fueling our economy. And yet, to your point, so much of the conversation that we have gets into immigration reform and othering, right? Othering and making sure that nobody else can come here, et cetera. And, you know, I wonder how the momentum of the growth of our American society, right, and its diversity actually can feed into a reimagining of the immigration reform conversations. So, the thing is, is that I was thinking about this, Aisha, because I knew you were going to ask me that question and kind of like, you know, the specificity of small acts, you know, the Biden administration, you no longer in institutional writing, governmental writing, you can no longer use the term a, a alien to refer to us, which is a wonderful thing. Mm. But, you know, there have been small incremental things, but my problem at this point is that, and what I'm getting from the community that I'm in touch with and reporting on is that there's an exhaustion about tiny moves that, and, and all of us, uh, especially black folk in this country, we need to be so tied in this because it, at this point we are a target and immigration mm. detention camps are replacing incarceration in terms of creating money for the private prison industry. So mm -hmm. we are the ones who have to say, this has to be a much broader change. This is basically at the level that I'm talking about now, Aisha, especially after we what we just saw on the border with horses and whips in the year 2021. Perfect entree for Slave President patrols. Biden to say, exacto. Perfect Andre and the, and these these men on horses with whips have been doing this 
for years. It happens that we we saw this. This is not new. So, you know, Joe Biden, of course, he got he got rid of the horses. That's not the problem. The horses are not the problem. Joe Biden should have gone down in that moment and said, over my dead body, will Border mm. Patrol continue to act like this? It stops now. Mm. We are shutting mm -hmm. the immigration camps down now. We are taking out the children. We are freeing the women because we know that immigrants show up to all of their court dates. And this is the moment for Joe Biden to say it all has to be deconstructed and no more of this. And actually, mm. you know, that would guarantee him reelection. But he's not doing it. He's doing the opposite. He's like, you know, we're we're, we're going to deport more Haitian uh, refugees. That's what he's doing, which is uh. quite sad. Uh, uh. Tell us about that, though, about the political power here, because you're making a really good point that and, you know, I'm saying this, I'm beating the drum, too. So many of us in the black community are beating the drum. Dude, if you do what you should do by us that you promised for us getting so many of these measures passed, like voting rights and criminal justice reform and all the things that are languishing, then, of course, that's going to help your reelection prospects. Talk about that, you know, with regards to all of the immigration issues in the community and how does that pol the politics break down? Because Republicans would like to remind us that, well, a lot of these immigrants are actually voting Republican now, too. So is there a political divide? Do you think that Joe Biden's got, you know, the Latino community? Oh, well, he's going to have to work for that vote. I mean, that is, huh? and, and what we saw, if anybody, we were paying attention, I know you were paying attention, what we saw was that an unlikely candidate in the sense that he's an older white man from Vermont, Bernie Sanders is the one that connected with Latino and Latina voters because mm. he was out there working it, making a connection. That is also the reason why the Trump administration and campaign received higher numbers of Latino voters and in particular what was happening in South Florida. They worked at it, Aisha. They were down there mm. for months and years actually working this community. So the message is wow. also what I would be carrying around in a big poster, Latinos and Latinas are the second largest voting bloc in the United States. We are the second largest mm -hmm. population cohort. We are racially mixed. We are black, we are lighter skin, we are darker skin. We are, so racially mm -hmm. we are everything, mm -hmm. but second largest population cohort. Wow. And the second largest voting bloc. That's... So thank you so much yeah. for, for having a conversation yeah. about Latino power, Well, because how did we learn it? How did we learn it? Yep. watching black women and black men, of course. Well, thank you so much, Maria Inojosa, for coming on. We appreciate your insight.